Christopher Chacon is a paranormal expert. He's been a part of the Paranormal Activity series for all five films. The latest one is coming out on Friday, Paranormal Activity, Next of Kin on Paramount+. Plus. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to see in this film and how you got involved with the uh, Paranormal Activity films. Well, it's it gives you know it gives a very interesting opportunity to uh, talk with people, and at, when when each film comes out, and they get to share their experiences, and of course there are all types of ghost stories. Everyone has some type of unusual experience they've ever had, and so both domestically um, in the United States and around the world, everyone has different unique experiences, and the movie allows these experiences to kind of come to the surface. And in exploring and discussing those, you find that it's a very different perspective on how people uh, view this kind of phenomena and how they also, some people either really enjoy the paranormal activity experience or, or they really enjoy it but walk away petrified from it for a couple of days. Oh, exactly. Now, in this film, it's a, a, a woman. She was adopted. She wants to learn a little bit about her mom, the Amish community. Uh, talk a little bit of, about that, that storyline, because often, you know, we either are trying to seek out something that is unknown to us as far as like, you know, family members, but a community that is very not in the public eye. So there's not a lot that's known about them to most people. Talk a little bit about, about that storyline for the uh, for the film. Yes, you know, it's it's. Uh... For those who are fans of the Paranormal Activity franchise, this is a, a refreshing, different journey. Uh, they're going to find it different from the, from the previous ones, because in this one, they take you out of the box, as it were. You're, you're not in the home anymore. You're in a setting that you're unfamiliar with. Even the characters are unfamiliar with. They're definitely fish out of water for using that term of where they're located. Um, and, it, you know, it's the, the inclination to want to connect with family, especially family you don't know of, you know, it's a very natural setting to want to do. Um, and these characters are trying to do that. Uh, but as they move further and further down the rabbit hole, as it were, it becomes more and more unstable with what she's, what she's trying to discover. And I think um, as, as if you, when you watch the film, you, your footing begins to become un very unstable rather quickly and you don't realize it before it's too late. And you're kind of, uh, uh, in almost a quicksand of a situation uh, that, that's coming down on these characters. Now, let's talk a little bit about your work, because how, how long have you been a paranormal expert in this field? Oh, wow. Uh, I've been doing this for a little over 40 years. So, um, a, a good portion of it was parapsychological research, and then another huge portion of it dealt with anomalistics, which is different perspectives of exploring these phenomena. Um, but I've investigated cases all over the world dealing with just about every type of phenomenon imaginable. Because, you know, in the early 80s, people had, you know, camcorders and video cameras at home if they wanted to set up something. How has technology shaped your industry and kind of helped you in, in your work? Well, from the, um, from the parapsychological standpoint, it, it's helped greatly to collect evidence. Um, anomalistics deals with these phenomena very differently because um, we, we've been able to have video footage of the most incredible phenomena where everyone, people would look at it and say, well, that's clearly a poltergeist, but anomalists see that differently. They only see it as a, as a video, as one piece to a puzzle, there needs to be other pieces put together. Um, and the reason for that is because I think people should keep in mind that some 70 to 80% of paranormal experiences are explainable. They are psychological, physiological, um, environmental circumstantial. They're explainable one way or, or another. Um, but that, of course, leaves 20 to 30 percent where the phenomena defies the laws of nature and physics. Um, and early on, I know before paranormal activity came out, I, I am still inundated with hundreds of hundreds of video. I remember the stacks of VHS tapes I would receive of people documenting these phenomena in their homes. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because when you look at the, all this footage from the past, it does really mimic what you see in the paranormal activity um, films. It, it's very much, they're, they're very similar. And I think that familiarity is one of the reasons why the movie uh, touches people so intimately. Does any, has anything scared you where you're like, I think I'm, I'm good? Or is this just you know, a, a normal you know, nine to five job you know, you know, for you? Or has anything kind of spooked you, you know, way beyond your own capacity? Um, it, you know, the, the situations, are, are, are often disturbing, unfortunately, I have to say. Um, I, I deal with the most volatile cases. So there's a lot of demonic possession cases, um, exorcism cases, poltergeist phenomena. Uh, 
and the situations I deal with are only the most volatile in a sense where people are people, animals, situations, there's, there's harm taking place. Um, and so that is the, the biggest impact it has. Uh, I'm not going to, I, I don't get afraid in that way. I mean, I've been startled. There's no question. I've been startled by things that pop up or move in, in one particular case we were dealing with, um, objects were being propelled around the room and some of these objects were 30, 40 pounds. So uh, when things like that happen, you know, you can't help but be startled. Uh, you're not expecting them to happen. And, you know, in, in this particular case I'm working on right now, that's exactly the situation where you're walking through this home and it's quiet. And all of a sudden there's a blast. Uh, and I, I'd say almost equivalent to like an air horn blast and it's within feet of you, but it's someone screaming. And when you're not expecting it and there's no source of where it's coming from, yeah, that, that makes you jump. Oh, exactly. Two things I want to ask and bundle it into one question. Sometimes people will say their pets, you know, something people toss out like, oh, my cat is possessed. And they'll say something along those lines. Or if you're staying at a friend's house, especially when you're a teenager and you hear different noises and they're like, the house is settling. Are those two things that are just kind of like your cat may just be acting up and the house may just be making noises? Or is there a potential that something other could be going on? <laughs> the easy answer is yes <laughs> to both because you know, like I was saying that, you know, 70, 80% are explainable. Um, house is settling, does happen. Um, and cats and animals are responding to things that they're sensing as well. Um, however, on the, in that 20 to 30% side, phenomena that enters the environment could potentially make the house move, temperatures change, doors move, and animals do react to it. They're responsive to it. So there's a little bit of both of those elements that can happen. And, you know, interestingly enough, over the, over the pan pandemic, environments have changed drastically where some environments usually packed with people are now empty. And people who are usually only home some of the time are now home a lot of the time. And we found a huge rise in reports of cases of unusual phenomena because usually people aren't in those settings or usually they're not in the setting or they're in it, I should say. And cameras or equipment are picking up things that normally they wouldn't. Um, so I, I think, again, the answer to your question is a little bit of both. A, a little bit of both. And then quickly here, but before we go, just a, a quick yes or no answer. Many cases in the Chicagoland area that you've, you've come here or have heard about, or have, are we pretty safe here in the, in the Midwest? Uh, no, there's, a, <laughs> you're, you're pretty much equal with the rest of the country. There's, there's, there are reports all the time, different types of phenomena, very extreme ones, and the uh, others that aren't so extreme. Uh, I, I will say that, that the benevolent ones are not harmful whatsoever. Um, those are the ones most people most encounter. It's this question of sort of living with the phenomena. Um, whenever some situations gets really bad, you know, the advice is just get out of the house, contact local authorities or wherever you can to reassess what actually is going on. Amazing. Christopher, thank you so much for your time today. Paranormal Activity, Next of Kin, Paramount Plus on Friday. Happy Halloween. And uh, thank you so much for your time today. Yes. Happy Halloween to you. Thank you.